Hi, this is Vanessa with the latest Tazen News, and here they are. At least three school students dead after floating in Jakarta, Indonesia. Three school students were killed during a float in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta, the latest in a series of floats hitting the city over the last few days. It was raining heavily. As soon as I got news from home, I immediately came here. An officer quoted by the media said three children were crushed by a crumbling wall as float water surged into the school. In addition, local authorities visited the scene after flood receded as police installed a line for further investigation. A religious ministry official announced that all the funding will be fully provided for those hospitalized and took responsibility for finding a temporary location for a teaching and learning process during the rehabilitation process. Indonesia frequently suffer floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season from November to March. Malaysian researchers use exoskeleton to improve oil palm harvesting amid labor crisis. Malaysian research student Hazik Ramli wore an outfit resembling a light jet pack with poles strapped to his biceps to wield a long pruning pole that clipped the sharp fronds and heavy bunches of fruit from oil palm trees nearly twice his height. So the idea is for the harvesters to wear the exoskeleton and uh, help them or assist them in reducing the burden or the load that they have to, uh, to, to bear, especially in carrying the pole from tree to tree and to actually do the harvesting process. So it reduces uh, the burden and uh, based on our, um, the experiments that we conducted, in the lab as well as with the real harvesters, we found out that it uh, managed to reduce uh, about 20% of workload of the harvesters. Haslin estimates 200,000 ringgit or $43,200 had been spent on developing prototypes and envisions the exoskeleton could cost around 7,000 ringgit or $1,510 if mass produced. According to industry estimates, the labor crunch is expected to cost companies over 20 billion ringgit or $4.4 billion in losses this year, hurting margins and giving an edge to bigger rival Indonesia, which has no such labor problems. Expert says it will take time for automation to phase out manual labor, though as few existing machines are practical for traversing fast and towering plantations. There is also concern that a swing to mechanization will threaten livelihoods. Palm oil farmer engineer Hamidon Saleh, who has been assisting the researchers at UTM, was keen to get any help being offered. United States and Philippine Marines participate in joint amphibious landing drills. Philippine and United States Marines held amphibious landing drills at a military outpost near Zambales province in the northwest of Manila as annual joint naval exercises. Troops boarded assault amphibious vehicles and simulated landing exercises on a nearby beach. They also held surveillance and reconnaissance exercises to identify chemical and biological attacks. Kamandak, an acronym in Filipino for Cooperation of the Warriors of the Sea, runs until October 14, will involve 2,550 American and 530 Filipino troops and include island-based exercises in amphibious landings, live fire and humanitarian assistance. The Armed Forces of the United States and the Philippines launched two weeks of joint naval exercises, reinforcing a close military alliance at a time of regional uncertainty over tensions between Washington and Beijing. Indonesia president says FIFA will not impose sanctions over deadly soccer stampede. Indonesian President Joko Widodo said soccer's world governing party FIFA will not impose sanctions on the country over stadium stampede last week that killed 131 people. In a video message, the president said Indonesia will work with FIFA to improve its management of soccer matches and that FIFA president Gianni Infantino will visit Indonesia in October or November. Alhamdulillah, 
sepak bola Indonesia tidak dikenakan sanksi oleh FIFA. The country's police chief said six people including police and match organizers are facing criminal charges in Indonesia over the tragedy. Police Chief Listio Sigit Prabowo told the news conference that organizers and police were among those being investigated and more people may be charged. They will be charged with criminal negligence causing death, which carries a maximum five-year prison sentence if found guilty. The suspects include three police officers over their use of tear gas, the head of the organizing committee and the chief security officer of the home club Arema FC. Thailand prepares funeral for mass shooting victims. Volunteers cleared out the lawn of a temple ground and layered bricks to build funeral pyres to be used for cremating the bodies of the Thai massacre victims in northeastern Non Bualampu province. We held a special and urgent meeting on this as there were many victims who died at the same time from the incident. We couldn't carry out the cremation via the normal, means because there are a large number of bodies and so the idea of the funeral pyres came up. It's an old tradition where the bodies will be burned outside, just not with the crematorium. A total of 19 pyres will be built at Rat Samake Temple, while some other families have chosen to transport the victim back to their respective hometowns and not cremate their loved ones. A total of 36 people, including 22 children, were killed in a knife and gun rampage last week by an ex-cop who later killed himself in Utai Sawan, a town 500 kilometers or 310 miles northeast of Bangkok. It was one of the worst child death tolls in a massacre by a single killer in recent history. Indonesian fans hold Friday prayers for match victims near Soccer St. Pete Stadium. Muslims gathered for weekly prayers at the mosque opposite the site of one of the world's worst soccer disasters where authorities said at least 131 people died as they fled an overpacked stadium in eastern Indonesia. Among those praying was 53-year-old Widodo who like many Indonesians goes by one name. Many of the supporters demand this to be resolved immediately so that the souls of those who died can rest in peace. That's why many religions pray for their souls to rest in peace. We also hope that the management of the Football Association of Indonesia will be immediately addressed, also the organizing committee and the committee of the Arema FC club as well, so that the spirits of those who died can rest in peace. I hope that in the future, police will be able to provide better security for supporters so that the supporters do not feel afraid and will feel safe. Supporter merasa tidak takut ataupun supporter merasa safety untuk keadanya, untuk posisi di sana. The deadly soccer stampede in Malang has raised questions about what some see as heavy-handed policing in the soccer match. The Southeast Asian nation with several walls of the stadium now covered in gravity condemning the police. An Indonesian police watchdog has said some officers wrongly used tear gas when there were no orders to do so. Tokyo calls for release of Japanese filmmaker jailed in Myanmar. A top Japanese spokesperson said the government will continue to urge Myanmar authorities for an early release of a Japanese filmmaker sentenced to 10 years in prison for violating sedition and communication laws. Japanese Deputy Chief Secretary Yoshihiko Izosaki added that an attorney had met with filmmaker Toru Kubota and confirmed he had no particular health problems.
Kuoto was arrested in July at a protest in Myanmar's main city of Yangon. At the time, it was reported he faced charges of breaking an immigration law and encouraging dissent against the ruling military. The Japanese Foreign Minister official said Kuwata was sentenced to three years in prison for sedition and seven years for violating a law on telecommunications by military ruled Myanmar's court. Malaysian Prime Minister calls for early election. Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub called for an early election, hoping to win a stronger mandate for his party and stabilize the rocky political landscape that has plagued the country over the last four years. With this announcement, the mandate will be returned to the people. The people's mandate is powerful antidote for the country to manifest political stability and create a strong, stable and respected government after the 15th general election. In a televised speech, Ismail said the country's monarch had agreed to his request to dissolve the parliament on Monday and an election date will be announced by the election commission. Polls must be held within 16 days of the dissolution of the parliament. Voter turnout could be reduced if the chosen date falls during the year and monsoon season. The ruling party's rush for an election comes as the economy still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic has begun to feel the pinch of rising costs and global slowdown. China's construction techniques ensure success of irrigation project in the Philippines. Chinese construction techniques have contributed to the success of an irrigation project in the Philippines and ensured that the project will be benefit the local people and deepen the friendship between the two countries. In the Philippines, the northern Luzon Island is regarded as the granary of rice and maize. For a long time, villagers living in the region could hardly utilize the water of the Chico River, also called the River of Life, to irrigate their farmlands because the river is at a lower altitude. To solve the irrigation problem, the Philippine government launched the Chico River Pump Irrigation Project that is contracted by the China CAMC Engineering Company. The project aims to elevate 29 meters of the river bank through the construction of a pump station in Pinukpuk of Kalinga, a northern province located in the Luzon Island, so that the water from the river will run through farmlands nearby. The canal will stretch through 8,700 hectares of farmlands and benefit 5,000 farm households living along the Chico River. Well, thank you everyone. Enjoy your lovely weekend. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe and stay healthy.